Hi. Continuing our Roden Schwartz CMU 200 CRTU series of videos, today we are going to look at um, cyanide, cyanide testing. We're going to do a test with uh, to test the sensitivity of this uh, Yaesu FT817 transceiver. We can see in the receiver specifications that for FM 70 centimeters and 2 meters, we should have a sensitivity of better than 0.2 microvolts for 12 dB cyanide. Okay, how do we test that on a Roden Schwartz? Well, first, our Roden Schwartz must support the AMPS mobile station software. It must also include the optional B21, uh, sorry, B41 audio analyzer which is capable of doing THD noise and cyanide testing. Right, prior to the video I have reset the analyzer. There's another video that will show you how to do that. And I also have worked out what my cable loss is. Just recapping on my setup here, I have an input, a 200 watt input attenuator going through a mixer to my CRTU. The other side of the mixer goes to another analyzer. I know from prior testing that it's 22.63 dB loss through the path. So I need to account for that path. So let's, let's get into it. To get into the AMPS testing, we go down to AMPS mobile station, press the select knob. We then go across, down here we go across to non-signaling tests, press the select knob. Go all the way down to sensitivity and press the select knob, which brings us to the sensitivity screen. Now we must remember that the, these screens are set up for cell phones. Cell phones are, are similar to, but not quite the same as our ham radio. So there's a couple of things we have to do. Uh, and this will be the same for a lot of analog um, radio equipment. So we go to connect control. The first thing I'm going to do is to tell the analyzer what port I'm using. I'm going to tell it that I am using my RF1 output, which goes through to my mixer or splitter, through my attenuator, out this port, and into my antenna socket on the transceiver. Okay, so we will select RF1 and we will tell it that. The attenuation value is 22.63 and we will enter that. Okay, the next thing we need to do is to set up the uh, deviation level. Cell phones have a, a different deviation level, a wider deviation level than what a transceiver ha this transceiver has. As you can see, it's preset to 8 kilohertz here. Now I'm, I went down and I pressed the generator section. I went down to mod generator. This is the modulation for the generator. And I'm adjusting deviation. And that will be 5 kilohertz. 5, 1, 2, 3, enter. Now, the, this frequency here is the modulating tone that the generator will use for it, uh, an FM. By default, amps is FM. Um, so we don't get to choose the mode here, it is assumed FM. Um, I'm going to be changing this frequency from 1004 to straight out 1000. Oop, I'm in the wrong screen. I want 5 kilohertz there. And I want 1000 hertz, or 1 kilohertz there for the tone. Okay, so... We've got 5 kilohertz for the deviation. We have got 1 kilohertz for the tone, the audio tone. Now the out input port or the output from the analyzer is coming out through RF1. We've got our attenuation set. That's great. Now press connect control again to come back into this screen. Now we want to make sure that this screen does several things so we are going to press the application and we're going to make sure that it is set to sensitivity which it is. We are going to go to RF generator and we are going to set our frequency. On the transceiver it is set to 432 megahertz. 
so up here we're going to change this to 432 megahertz to match enter right we don't need to change anything else but what we are going to do is we're going to turn on the generator okay and we can see that the generator is turned on we can see a signal coming into our radio now the other connection we've got from our radio is from the earphone socket we go back to the audio in now I think this on a CMU 200 uh, is it does say in and the other one says out um, on the CRTU uh, it has quite a little bit different labeling so this is my audio in so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be generating a signal through here at 433 or 432 megahertz uh, 1 kilohertz deviation uh, sorry a 1 kilohertz audio tone 5 kilohertz deviation into here what the analyzer is going to do when we start it is going to work out what the sensitivity is for us. So we press the sensitivity button and we press go. Now that's all we need to do. Right now the analyzer is outputting different RF levels and, and it will tell us what RF level it took to get to the 12 dB and it's finished its testing now and it's saying now the sensitivity is minus 122 dBm. Okay, so if we go to our tables here uh, and have a look at 122, we can see that that is 0 0.178, 0.178, which is less than, so it is better than our quoted 0 0.2 microvolts. All right, now you may have wondered how, why this stopped at 12 dB cyanide. Well, on this screen here, you can tell it where to stop. By default it is set to 12 dB, it's an industry standard, but you may want to know what sensitivity at 14 dB cyanide is. So you simply type 14 in and restart our test. Restart our test. So now it will, it will run away and it will automatically test and come back with the output level minus 121 for 14 dB cyanide. So we can change that back to 12 dB cyanide and run our tests again. One twenty-two. Okay. Um, things to note about this screen is that again, I can't reiterate, reiterate enough is that it thinks it's a cell phone. It's designed for cell phones. So when you go and change, for example, the RF generator, and you want to enter in a frequency like, I don't know, let's say four three two point one seven five, enter, it will come up with an error. It won't let you do that because that is not a step or a predefined value for a, for a cell phone. Cell phones have certain frequency steps. So it's saying here use 432.18 I could accept that or cancel. But it's only going to let you go in its predefined steps which can be a bit of a pain. But unfortunately it's a bit of a compromise. Now you might say well, that, that's it for the amp side of the uh, Cyanad testing. You may actually think, well, I've got a CRTU or a CMU200. It has the audio analyzer, but I don't have the amp screen. Um, but I do have an audio analyzer. Why can't I do? Why can't I test it with it? Well, we'll show you why. The we'll go into the. RF screen, if we go down here uh, into the analyzer generator and we generate into generator and we generate um, 432 432 oops, a daisy fingers here 432 
and the modulation would be FM and the frequency be 1 kilohertz which it's got we, and we make that something more reasonable with something like minus 80 okay and we turn that on uh, we will also have to make sure that our output is on RF1 and we'll have to make sure we put our attenuation value in again at 22.63 okay now we can see that we have here the transceiver and we can hear our tone if we take our, microphone, our headset out the challenges that we have we'll put that back in well actually we'll leave it out for this demo turn the turn the volume up a little bit so you can hear what I mean we'll come back into this screen here and we'll go to okay so we're generating our tone everything should be okay let's go and have a look at what the value is we'll go to the audio analyzer screen back here we will go down to uh, audio audio analyzer generator could you hear that? Signal stopped. The, uh, the Roden Schwartz is set up so that when you're in the audio screen, that's all it will do. When you're in the RF generator analyzer screen, that's all it will do. There is no other combination screen that will show you the audio analyzer and RF generator on the one screen. Um, which is just how the unit was built. I would say though that um, that is a downside, but if you um, are capable of GPIB programming, you will be able to, to create a program that can do all of that on your one program. So you're not limited via GPIB interface, the computer interface, to having just either RF or just AF um, tests and so forth you can combine all those with your own program so it is a bit of a downside and I am working on a program a PC program that will do all that in the one screen but at this stage it's not ready um, so say stay tuned hopefully we'll come out in a few weeks with a, a nice single shot program that will do everything all on the one screen via the computer using the hardware in the analyzer the very good hardware in the analyzer okay Thanks for that. Talk to you later. Bye.